a very short introduction to a very short series of very short videos. A few months ago, some students from Leipzig University in Germany got in touch and asked if they could do a Skype interview. They are working on a project about music and home computers in the 1980s. Wow! The project has a long academic name which I can't quite remember, but I will put it in full in the description. If you lived through the home computer scene of the 1980s or 1990s, if you played games on home computers from that time, if you liked the music from the chips of the home computers of that time, chip tunes, then I think there's something here which will interest you. Now the whole interview was an hour and a half long, but don't panic. I have pulled out really short extracts from the interview, just little topics which I think might be of interest. The project has a website. Here it is. It is in German. Google Translate jumps in to do a pretty good job of the translation. The group is also producing a series of podcasts, and this is the podcast site. Again, Google Translate to the rescue, although they haven't quite managed to translate the podcasts into English. The group said most of these will be in German. The links to the site and the podcast site will be in the description if you want to check them out. Now, I've called this little mini-series the Leipzig Tapes for reasons you will discover in the description. So that's it. There are probably going to be six or eight videos in the series. They'll be one or two minutes long, probably, at most. Have a watch. Have a listen. Let me know what your memories or thoughts are on any of the topics under discussion. Right, let's get into it. Leipzig tape number one. Yeah, so you were one of the lucky ones who got in BBC. Do you remember when you got a BBC Micro? I've always been interested in computers, even before there were a thing. Uh, the first reasonably affordable commercial computer was the Sinclair ZX80. Well, in the UK, I don't know what 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 it was like in Germany. Did you have a, a Sinclair, the ZX80, ZX81 Sinclair Spectrum? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also as a um, set for soldering uh, myself. Uh, excellent, yes. Mm. Well, the, the, the first sort of reasonably uh, affordable available one in the UK was the ZX80, which was released in 1980 uh, as a kit. And I thought it was quite interesting. There were actually a few uh, computer kits available, you know, through magazines and so on before that. But I, I didn't want to get involved with any of those. So the first sort of generally available one was the ZX80. Uh, I didn't trust my soldering skills. So I, and I, it was really very underpowered. But when the ZX81 came out, there was an option to buy a ready-built one, uh, mm -hmm. so I bought a ready-built one. So that was my first. That was my first real computer. It had one K of memory. Yeah, which That's is not just <laughs> <laughs> nothing related to today's uh, memories. That, that, that was great. And I did a lot of programming on that, um, but I knew new things were coming out. But the BBC, you know the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Someone thought it'd be a good idea to get the um, get the kids and get everybody computer it. So yeah. they were looking for a computer uh, which they could promote and get behind and run um, uh, run TV programs about. Uh, so there was a bit of a competition to find out which computer it was going to be. But Acorn were developing this. That itself is a fascinating story. There have actually been a couple of documentaries about how the BBC Micro came to be. Uh, and I was watching all the developments and uh, I was reading the information about the BBC. I thought, this is it. I really hope they pick the BBC micro because it had the best basic, had the best functions, had the, the best input outputs. Uh, I wasn't thinking about the sound chip, to be honest, at that time. So I had the ZX81 in uh, 1981. And when I heard about that, that was the computer. I thought, this is going to be the most powerful, uh, the, the easiest to use, the most flexible computer. So that's, that's why I ended up with the uh, BBC. I think this program that they did is really interesting for me. Did you yeah, yeah. take part in some, or I mean, you were part of their program somehow, I would say, right? Because you writing the books was not their program, but I, I wonder how far it goes or how, how big the influence is because it's a big project. And um, then maybe it's also a reason why they think, oh, we 
maybe a book on making music on the BBC would be interesting and all the people learning basic. So then a book um, making music with basic is also, I think it all fits very well. But Well, they, they never invited me onto their programme. No. So, <laughs> I don't know how much of an infl influence my book had, but um, you know, as I said, you know, the, the, these were the boom times of the home computers. Everybody yeah. was sort of getting on board. All the schools had a BBC computer. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, um, uh, you know, a lot of the kids uh, mm. bought my book and thought, "Oh, this is this is good. This is fun." And you know, you could just type the programs in and um, and experiment with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. 